Is the US Air Force B-21 Raider already flying missions? It's July 2025 and Edwards Air Force Base is buzzing with whispers of this stealth beast. Check out this image of the B-21 Raider undergoing testing at Edwards Air Force Base. Nothing about this jet looks incomplete to me. It looks like it's prepping or it's being armed for takeoff. There isn't a whole bunch of infrastructure around it. There aren't auxiliary power units. It's got its maintenance crew and probably some people that are doing tests and evaluation on the maintenance side, so it doesn't have this massive entourage of what a stealth jet that is completely a prototype might potentially have. So what does this image tell us about the B-21 Raider? I'm gonna get to that in a second, and I've also got a stack of additional photos, the most recent images of this stealth beast that I'll be reviewing, so stay to the end of the video for that. The B-21 Raider is America's next-gen bomber. It isn't just a prototype though, guys. It's slicing through the skies and the Pentagon's hinting it might already be combat ready. I'm Ryan, also known as Max Afterburner, also known as the fighter pilot next door, and today we're unraveling the mystery. Is the B-21 already flying covert missions? Is it doing that right now as we speak? And to me, the B-21 is redefining what's possible in the air. I'll be giving you everything I know about the B-21 and everything that I would think of as a fighter pilot teaming up with the B-21 and going in in a strike package with the B-21 into hostile territory. This bomber is so stealthy, it's like an AI-powered ghost working on its ability to fly and drop bombs at the same time. So we'll be diving into the cutting edge tech of the B-21. We'll be talking about weapons like the next generation penetrator, which is going to replace the max ordnance penetrator. We'll talk about whether the B-21 can carry the MOAB, the mother of all bombs. We'll talk about the pilotless potential and how the B-21 syncs up with F-22s, F-35s, and CCAs. And the jaw dropping images and videos of the B-21 reveal its alien-like design. I can't help but just think this thing looks like an alien when I look at it. So stay locked in for my full fighter pilot take on what ops this beast might be running right now. And the plot twist is, I think the missions it's running might be different than you think. The B-21 Raider is crafted by Northrop Grumman. It's the Air Force's stealthy successor to the B-2 Spirit. It's built to dominate for decades. It was unveiled in 2022 at Plant 42 in Palmdale, California. This bomber has been cloaked in secrecy, but sightings show it soaring alongside T-38s and F-16s, those chase jets at Edwards Air Force Base. The Pentagon's pushed an accelerated timeline with the first two combat capable B-21 set to fly in 2026. And that's backed by $10.3 billion budget for 2026 alone. The Air Force is testing for combat missions likely right now. And it's hinting that these jets could deploy in a crisis sooner than planned if needed. Back to the B-21 Raider in a second. I wanna tell you about today's video partner, Upside. So using the free Upside app, there's an easy way to get cash back. Every time you fill up your tank, you grab a bite to eat or you stock up on a essentials. In fact, top upside earners right now are making as much as $300 a month. The free upside app gives you cash back on daily essentials like gas, groceries, and dining. There's over 100,000 gas stations, grocery stores, and restaurants on the upside app. And yeah, it's real cash back. No confusing rewards, points, or credits, just actual money you can transfer straight to your bank account or choose from popular gift cards. Next, you claim an offer for whatever you're buying on upside. Then you pay as usual with a credit or debit card. You follow the steps in the app and you get paid. People can earn three times more cash back with upside than any other product. This includes loyalty programs and credit card rewards. One million dollar cash back is being earned by users each week right now. So before I go through any aerial refueling, I mean regular refueling, I'll look around me for which gas stations on the Upside app offer a discount and I'll go to that one. You should use it that way too. You can also use it to grab bites around town or to stock up on supplies. You can earn an average of 8% cash back on grocery and dining plus up to 25 cents per gallon in gas purchases. To find out how much you could actually earn, click the link in the description to download Upside and use code after burner to get an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas or just scan this QR code here to claim this offer. Stay operational as I like to say and cash back smarter with the free upside app. Now back to the B-21. But what could those operational missions actually be? Well it could be running covert recon operations over the South China Sea, it could be testing electronic warfare in restricted airspace, or it could even be doing preemptive strikes on high value targets if it was necessary, if the B-2 fleet wasn't able to accomplish that. The B-2 flew secret missions before its debut, so the precedent is there for this B-21 to already be operational. This jet's stealth 
and AI driven systems make it ideal for those sneaky, sneaky operations. I fear you're underestimating the sneakiness, sir. Ellsworth Air Force Base in South Dakota is transforming to host the B-21s with upgraded hangars, simulators, and runways. It's signaling a rapid deployment of these beasts into its first operational squadron, and that could push it into combat in an operational theater sooner than we all think. And pushing this tech to its limits is definitely one of the missions that it's flying right now. Whether or not it's flying those combat missions, that's up for debate. They say the best weapon is one you never have to fire. I respectfully disagree. But it is definitely flying operational test missions, and those test missions must be an absolute blast for the pilots. The B-21's moving fast though. It's essentially running so fast that it's outrunning its shadow. These pilots are being put through the ringer. They're making sure that it can do everything from dropping those next level penetrator bombs all the way to aerial refueling. I'm sure this testing is fun, but it's definitely gotta be a challenge. So let's talk more about what these test pilots are likely doing with this beast. Test pilots at Edwards Air Force Base are putting the B-21 through its paces, and these aren't just joy rides. Picture a pilot climbing into the cockpit at dawn, taking the radar low over Nevada deserts to simulate infiltrating enemy airspace. They're testing stealth against simulated radars like China's JY-26 or Russia's NABO-M, those more advanced surface-to-air threats. They're ensuring that this jet is near invisible against those threats. But more than any low altitude flights, they're more likely running high altitude cruises at 50,000 feet plus with Mach 0.9 sprints intertwined into every single sortie. And tight maneuvers are likely avoided at this point, but there might be some small maneuvers that it can do, but it likely doesn't dodge SAMs in a traditional way like a fighter jet would dodge SAMs. It uses the beeps and squeaks, it uses its specific onboard electronic warfare suite, and it uses its invisible cloak to dodge those radars instead of dodging them like a fighter jet would. Those Air Force test pilots are validating sensor fusion. They're ensuring the AI processes radar, infrared, and satellite feeds in milliseconds to combine into a 360 degree battle space view and give the most situational awareness to the pilots and to the mission commanders that will be running and operating next level missions in the future. They're also syncing this thing with combat collaborative aircraft like the XQ-58A Valkyrie, practicing retasking drones mid-flight via secure data. Also, they're teaming up with the Fury from Anduril to make sure that it can link up securely with the data links to scout, jam, or strike. Combined with the capability of the B-21 and the Anduril Fury, this thing's essentially untouchable. And while it's doing all this collaboration, it needs to stay hidden. It needs to stay hidden stealth-wise and electronically with the different signals that it's sending out. Those signals can't be detected either, or essentially its stealth would be worthless. And then I would say that some pilotless flights are being tested as well. The B-21's AI is said to be able to fly autonomously with pilots monitoring from the ground. That preps us for a future where bombers and drones swarm together. They're uploading software to counter threats like hypersonic missiles, leveraging the jet's open architecture system. This jet's leading a new era of combat, and the pilots are at the helm of something revolutionary. These pilots are literally flying the most future tech available, and they're rewriting how air power works. It's essentially like they're John Wick holding the biggest gun on the market and they're calling every single shot. I'm going to need a gun. I thought you'd never ask. Nine millimeter pit viper. How'd you get this? Well, let's talk about the B-21's potential lethal arsenal. And that's the whole reason the B-21 exists, is to get these massive bombs or these strategic bombs up to altitude in a stealthy fashion. The B-21 is a flying fortress with a devastating arsenal. It's built to carry the GBU-57B, that massive ordnance penetrator, that 30,000 pound bunker buster bomb with a 5,300 pound warhead. That bomb itself is designed to burrow through 200 feet of reinforced concrete. And that's ideal for places like North Korea Korea's nuclear bunkers, or even Iran's newest nuclear bunker after it's been combat tested to be effective against Iran's current nuclear structures. The B-21 is expected to carry only one mop, and that's unlike the B-2's two, but that's due to the smaller size of the B-21. But the successor to the Max Ordnance Penetrator is called the Next Generation Penetrator, and that is tailored specifically for the B-21, and we'll get to that in a second. The Raider also packs Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missiles, or JASM ERs. Those have a 600 mile range, a thousand pound warheads for precision strikes on air defenses or command centers. It also carries a nuclear payload. We can't forget this thing's a nuclear capable aircraft and that includes the B-61-12 bomb with adjustable yields up to 50 kilotons and the AGM-181A that's a long range standoff 
LRSO cruise missile with a 1500 mile range for strategic deterrence. It could also carry 12 to 16 AIM-260 JATAMs, those long range air to air missiles that could be for self-defense operations or it could essentially be a stealthy missile truck for platforms like the F-47 or the F-22. Can this thing carry the GBU-43B, the MOAB? The MOAB is a 21,700 pound blast. It's designed for area destruction, not penetration. And it's typically dropped from platforms like a C-130, not stealth bombers. Its size and lack of versatility with stealth platforms makes it unlikely for the B-21, which prioritizes precision and survivability. Instead, the B-21 is better suited for the GBU-72. That's a 5,000 pound bunker buster bomb with GPS INS guidance or potentially smaller JDAMs like the GBU-31 that offers flexibility for less fortified targets. Now let's compare the NGP to the MOP. Let's do a tech breakdown and talk about why that NGP is a game changer. The next generation penetrator is the B-21's future bunker buster. It's designed to outshine the GBU-57 MOP in a couple different ways. The MOP is a 30,000 pound beast with a 5,300 pound warhead. It's got a Bluey 127 warhead that penetrates up to 200 feet of concrete using GPS and INS and a large penetrator smart fuse to detonate at optimal depth. It proved its might in Operation Midnight Hammer on June 22, 2025 when the B-2 successfully tested it in combat. But its massive size limits the B-21 to carrying only one and its unpowered design requires close drops risking exposure in contested airspaces. The NGP in development since the early 2010s is a leap forward. It's lighter with a warhead under 22,000 pounds fitting the B-21's smaller bomb bay while maintaining deep penetration power. It's Advanced Guidance, Navigation, and Control, or GNC, not General Nutrition Centers, but something even better for all you meatheads out there. But that GNC, the Guidance, Navigation, and Control System, achieves a circular error probability of less than two meters, even in GPS-denied environments, and that surpasses the MOPS, which is said to be somewhere around three to five meter accuracy. The NGP may include a rocket booster for standoff capabilities as well, that allows it to launch from safer distances against advanced air defenses like China's HQ-9 or Russia's brand new S-400. It uses void sensor and floor counting fuses, detecting underground spaces for precise detonation, unlike the MOPS stop base fuse, making it deadlier against complex bunkers with limited intel. So this thing could change its fusing real time using AI, and that's next level. With prototypes expected by mid-2025 or 2026, why is it better though? It's more precise, it's more survivable, and more versatile, and it's tailored specifically for the B-21 stealth and AI-driven ops that counters evolving threats from China, Russia, and North Korea. This weapon is set to redefine bunker busting for the next generation. The NGP is so lethal, it's like it went to boot camp and came back able to dodge bullets. No big deal. So now let's break down some specific images of the B-21, but first let's compare it to the B-2 Spirit. The B-21's wingspan is about 140 feet. That's smaller than the B-2's 172 feet, but its length is estimated to be somewhere around 70 feet, and that's close to the B-2's 69 feet. The B-21's lighter with a single axle, two-wheel landing gear design versus the B-2's heavier four-wheel design. It suggests a payload of somewhere around 20 to 30,000 pounds, and that's compared to the B-2's 60,000 pounds. So here's the side profile captured from an image in 2024. It shows a sleeker flying wing design with a deep shelf-like duckbill nose that's sharper than the B-2's beak-like front, and it's optimized to scatter radar waves from low angles. The B-21's cockpit windows are also tiny. You can see it's got the pedo probe in the front. That is specifically for testing, so that won't actually be on the operational jets themselves. And then that's a good view of that duckbill. And then the windows. The windows essentially just need to give the B-21 the ability to land and refuel. I'm sure that the auto land capability on the B-21 is next level. So having the windows there is almost essentially like a backup. Pilots will need to know how to land this thing, but the ability for it to auto land will be essentially seamless. But then you've gotta be able to aerial refuel. So you can see there's some aerial refueling symbology on the top of the jet. So I would expect it to have that center line aerial refueling port, just like the B-2 has. And then looking down the side, you can see some of the patches on it from the commands that own this thing. And then it's got a really sleek design with the intakes essentially seamless integrated into the fuselage. So I really like that flow, how much it looks like it's all purpose built. And then it just looks to me like the radar waves would just slip off the back of this thing with not a lot of protrusions. And then you can see there's a probe that is protruding from the bottom. I'm thinking that that is a retractable probe or it's just a testing probe that will be removed in the actual operational B-21s. And then there's a close up of that pedo probe that's just gonna be there for testing, making sure that they're getting everything right with the air data sensors and the flight computers. So that's there 
there to just provide more information early on while they perfect the flush instruments that'll be an actual part of the B-21 that's combat capable. And then there's a good view of the back of that aircraft. You can see some serrated areas on that black part. I think a lot of the black parts of this have certain sensors in it. So some of the paint might need to be slightly different. So that sensor is probably gonna be something that evolves into that 360 degree battle space perspective. We don't know exactly what it is yet, but a lot of times on these jets, the paint might not be conducive to actually receiving what that needs to receive. So the paint on this is gonna be radar scattering and is gonna be optimized for stealth. And that lighter gray is kind of cool. This shows that it can operate night or day. Likely though, this will be a predator that stalks at night. So this jet will likely fly at night most of the time, but it is interesting that they did make the paint a little bit lighter than the B-2. And then this is kind of an interesting fact. So if you look at the gear doors from the original prototype, you can see it's codenamed Cerberus. And Cerberus is a mystical three-headed beast from Greek mythology that guards the gates of Hades to keep the dead from escaping. That's a dark menacing name, perfect for one of the most destructive war machines ever built. And then here's a view kind of from below as this thing's coming in to land. You can see that it's got just those two wheels on each of the main gear as opposed to the four for the B-2. And then this is an image where we can really see the aircraft's auxiliary intake doors. So because the intakes are so specifically designed for stealth, they might not get the air they need at low speeds or higher angle of attacks when this thing's taking off or coming into land. So those auxiliary intake doors open up and they've kind of got that delta wing design where they open up and they allow extra airflow to go into the engines to keep any type of compressor stall from being an issue. And then here's a frontal view. So you can see those intakes are really buried deep inside of the B-21. So that's an advantage over the B-2, which has more exposed intake. So likely this thing is gonna have even deeper levels of stealth, but that's why it needs those auxiliary doors that are pretty big. The B-2 has those auxiliary doors as well. But as you can see from this front image, those intakes are extremely secretive. You can't see them up close and they're very embedded into the fuselage, which I think is just a next level up in stealth from the B-2. So what's my take on it? Well, the B-21's likely a leaner, meaner predator. So essentially what I'm saying is the B-21 actually goes to the squat rack. It's not that guy that lives by the curl bar all day long. But here's my overall take. The B-21 stealth AI and firepower paired with that NGP, that next generation penetrator, make it a game changer platform. And the Pentagon's rush suggests it could already be pulling covert ops. Likely it's just doing these testing missions, but I'm sure they've talked about the capability to get it rapidly into combat within a couple months if it's not doing it already. It could be doing recon over the Pacific, or it could just be testing electronic warfare in denied environments. The beeps and squeaks could be getting worked out with the test pilots, honing in on the user interface of the avionics and sinking the jet into the nuclear triad. But likely future combat missions with this thing will include deep strikes on bunkers, nuclear deterrence patrols, or leading CCA swarms to cripple air defenses and strategic targets within a country. The images that we've seen so far, they show us a jet that's built to vanish and strike with vengeance. It'll likely leave enemies completely clueless. With Ellsworth Air Force Base already prepping and completely changing their infrastructure for 100 plus Raiders, the Air Force is ready to unleash this beast. What do you think about the B-21 and when do you think it'll be fully combat ready? Or do you think it already is? Let me know in the comments below. And hey, don't forget, check out this video right here. That's literally the best compliment you can give me is to watch this video right here. It'll help the channel grow immensely if you watch this video right here and I would greatly appreciate it. It's teed up specifically for you. So I'll see you on this video right here. This is Ryan, also known as Max Afterburner, also known as the fighter pilot next door, signing off.